Hey everyone, it's Rhoda. How's it going? In this video, I am going to talk about how my C-section nearly killed me and um, just something very traumatic that I've had to deal with that I feel like so many more people should know about because this is something that happened to me that I had no idea was possible. And so I just feel like it's really important to put this information out there. So in 2011, I had a C-section uh, with my first son. It wasn't planned. I had actually intended to go in and have a natural birth, a natural delivery and all of that, but didn't happen. The doctor said that the baby's heart rate was all over the place and it's, my labor was just going on for hours and hours, so they said that I had no choice, pretty much. I had to go in and get a C-section. So it happened. I felt bad about myself, but I got over it because I had a beautiful baby boy, and you know, I just try to move on and forget about it. However, seven years later, okay, I kid you not, seven years later, I'm lying in bed. This was in 2018. Uh, no, end of November 2018, I'm lying in bed. I wake up around a little after 4 a.m. with the worst kind of stomach pain you could ever imagine. And I'm not even just talking about like regular old stomach ache, I'm talking about pain beyond pain, like a thousand times worse than natural childbirth because I actually, when I had my second one, I got to have my natural birth. I mean, that was a walk in the park compared to this feeling that I had, all right? Woke up in the morning in 2018, just felt like I was dying. My husband rushed me to the ER. Um, they were doing so many different tests. And finally, um, they saw something on my CT scan. And my doctor came in and said to me, like, you know, we got to get you into surgery, like right now. Um, basically, he didn't know exactly what it was that was on the scan. It just looked really, really bad <laughs> in his opinion. That's all he just said. It just looks bad. Um, and there's reason for concern and we need to rush. So I was terrified. They put me out and I woke up about five to six hours later when I woke up um, the doctor was there and basically told me something that I never in a million years expected to hear. He said that when they opened me up, they found that my small intestine was actually tied in a tight knot, okay? Like a shoelace. It was tied so tightly that um, he tried initially to untie it, but couldn't. And he said in his whole career that he'd never seen anything like that before. Never seen an intestine tied in a tight knot like a shoelace. He actually called in other surgeons to look at it because it was so, it was such a shock to him and he couldn't figure out like, okay, well, I, you know, he actually tried to get other doctors to untie it. Nobody could untie it. Um, they ended up, uh, he ended up cutting it out and it was 60% of my small intestine that was cut it was cut because basically after that tie happened, the intestine just started to die. The tissue started to die and 60% of it was already dead. And my doctor told me that if I had come to the hospital, if I had gotten there um, five hours later, that I would have been dead. Like there would have been nothing he could have done to save me because the tissue was just all slowly dying. And that was, was just completely terrifying to hear. Um, so why did that happen? Because it just sounds like something so crazy. Um, and after actually I got out of the hospital, I, you know, I had a lot of jokes from family members and friends saying things like, um, oh, you know, it, it, that happened because of all the yoga that you did because you're twisting yourself. I, I mean, I'm twisting myself and then my intestine got twisted. I got a few of those. Um, other people, you know, commented on the fact that I eat so healthy and I have a great vegan diet and, oh, maybe that was the cause, <laughs> that was the cause of it somehow. And I'm like, no, I've never heard of that before in my life. Um, but anyway, basically all of you guys probably know by now what the cause of it is because of the title of this video, it was my C-section. So whenever someone is cut into, um, in a surgery, uh, and in a C-section, scar tissue is created afterward, right? The body forms scar tissue 
um, after that cutting, after that trauma happens in an effort to um, heal itself, you know, and kind of correct things, this scar tissue ends up growing um, in the body and forming um, adhesions and it's very sticky. And so what ends up happening is an organ can get caught on it and get stuck. And in my case, because of my C-section surgery, I had a, this scar tissue here that grew over seven years and my, um, my small intestine got stuck on it. And it just somehow ended up into a knot, giving me the worst pain that I've ever had in my whole life, putting me near hours away from death. This was just a lot for me to digest, you know, especially after coming off of a surgery suddenly and just knowing that this had happened. Um, after it happened, my doctor said to me, you know, this thing with the knot is a once in a lifetime thing. Um, it's like you were struck by lightning. So, you know, it, it's rare. I've never seen it before. So don't worry about it. You know, he's like, go home, live your life the same, you know, just, just get yourself healed and don't worry about it. Put this behind you. So that's what I did. I put it behind me. So fast forward, you know, a few years go by and the pain starts happening again. This was um, in January, just this past January, less than two months ago, the pain starts again. Not as bad as it was that first time, but it was still pretty bad. And that trauma just, just gripped me again, you know, cause it was such a hard time getting through that a few years ago and just knowing that you know, this is fatal, right? And I just, you know, my husband rushed me to the hospital again. Um, they did tests and confirmed that I was having another obstruction in my small intestine. Not as bad this time. Um, of course, it didn't twist up into a knot because that would have been impossible for that to have happened again. But this time it just kind of got caught on the scar tissue and just kind of um, twisted a little bit and caused that pain and caused that backup in my digestive system. I spent um, maybe four nights or so in the hospital to resolve it. Um, luckily, I didn't have to do another surgery and it was able to resolve um, by them doing the worst thing imaginable. Actually, I, in some cases to me, it's worse than surgery. I, I'm just saying that because it, it is pretty bad though, but <laughs> um, the, it's the NG tube and they stick this tube all the way down your nose and then it goes all the way down your throat and into your stomach and it suctions all the stuff, you know, all the blockage out of your stomach until things calm down and go back to normal. And so basically I had to live with this tube down my nose, down my throat and my stomach for several days. It was really painful. At one point the tube fell out for some reason and they had to reinsert another one that was bigger. I just <laughs> that's it was the worst um, but anyway it actually resolved and I was like okay um, I guess the other doctor was wrong in that you know I'm still having some kind of issue here even though it's not as bad but it's still continuing so I started researching and saying you know I gotta I gotta do something about this I gotta prevent something like this from happening again um, and then out of nowhere again Two weeks after I get back from the hospital um, in January, two weeks later in February, this was just last month, I have the pain again and I have to go back to the hospital for another few days um, with an obstruction, same thing. And after that, I asked my doctor, I said, I can't be here every two weeks. This is ridiculous. What can I do to get ahead of this thing? What can I do to prevent this? What can I do with my scar tissue? to ensure that this doesn't happen again and that it doesn't get snagged. And he tells me nothing. There's nothing you can do. He says, you could be back tomorrow. You could be back next week. You could be back next month. Hopefully it's not next month. Hopefully it's more like next year. And I'm just like, you gotta give me something better here because that's not, that's nothing that I can hold on to. <laughs> and it's not gonna help me. And anyway, I was like, okay, you know what? Um, I cannot rely on doctors to tell me what to do. I just, I just have to do it and I have to find solutions for it. Um, so it's been, it's been about a month that I have been out of the hospital, thankfully. Um, the fear is still with me every day. 
um, honestly, that I could end up back there, um, that the, the intestine, once again, can snag on that scar tissue that was created for my C-section. Oh, and I didn't even mention, it, it all started with my C-section scar tissue. However, when they did the surgery on me in 2018, because of my tight intestine, it was another um, cut, obviously, that they made. So there's more scar tissue now. So it's two, um, two different sets of scar tissue now that's um, growing, you know, throughout the abdomen. So the doctor says there's nothing I can do but I have been finding solutions and working on ways uh, to break up the scar tissue. I mean, there are so many different kinds of therapies out there and I've just started uh, diving into all that. And um, yeah, I, I guess I just feel like I had to, I wanted to put this out there just as a way of saying that, hey, it's possible, right? I mean, for every woman, the odds are very low. Um, I have so many friends that have had C-sections but have not, lucky for them, have not had to go through this um, like I have and like I am going through and, and that's amazing and I'm, and, but there will be a number um, of women out there and there are who do have this happen as a result of a C-section and I really feel like I wish I had known, I wish I had known um, right after my c-section that this was a possibility that the scar tissue could create this problem for me in the future because if I had known right after that I would have taken the initiative to do something about it and so I make this video um, not to scare anyone right and and into thinking that oh if I get a c-section this is this horrible thing is gonna happen or you know maybe that that scare anyone into thinking that it's wrong to get a c-section or whatever it may be I don't make this for that I make it to just spread awareness of this and to really um, bring up the importance of breaking up that scar tissue so women after you've gotten you've had your c-section you've healed for a few months start looking for ways to break it up and there are so many different ways like myofascial release um, there's machines that are able to break up scar tissue um, there are a lot of different forms of physical therapy and self abdominal massage that you're you can do and I'm finding now I mean I'm I'm now dealing with you know because my c-section was in 2011 and my second surgery uh, was in 2018 so I'm dealing with 10 years right 10 years of scar tissue it, it is going to take me longer because that scar tissue grows throughout the body and so I just encourage you um, as early as you can as soon as you can to start breaking it up and it will make the difference it will make the difference and um, so thank you so much for watching this video I might check back in to share maybe more updates about my journey and what I'm doing to get rid of the scar tissue and to hopefully, hopefully not end up in the hospital again because it's truly a traumatic experience having to go through this and like just dealing with the uncertainty and not knowing when it's gonna happen because it's so random, it's just so random. The digestive system is always moving, the small intestine is always moving, and it can get snagged at any time. Um, so I'm on a mission, you know, I'm on a mission to break up this scar tissue. Please wish me lots of luck. Please pray for me that this does not happen again. Um, and I really hope that maybe this video can help somebody in the future give some insight or some information and just ways of being able to support yourself and your healing. Um, so thank you again. Subscribe to my channel, please, if you're not subscribed already. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much.